have a lot to talk about today. Uh, what am I going to talk about? I have two different phrases. One is going to be between, I mean, this is what I heard. I listened to it, TD Jakes yesterday, and, and I liked, I like what he was saying, you know, and, and he was just, he was saying something important and it, re it related a lot to uh, what we, we've talked about here, but I want to talk about, it's kind of what I talked about with consistency and the value of being consistent. We talked about that a few weeks ago, but this is the first point of the project or the, or the philosophy. I want you guys to understand the link between stability and success. Okay? That's it. That's the first part. Stability and success. That's what we're going to talk about. And I want you to understand that they have a correlation. And you really cannot have one without the other. Some of you guys, you don't need to acquire more information. You don't need to do anything. Some of you are more talented and equipped than a lot of people. I even said this to the real estate guys yesterday. I hopped in, I hopped in on the Zoom call. I was talking to them. And I just said, you guys don't need to learn. I said, you are more educated than any generation before you. You have access to, to more than anybody ever has. You're living through this time. You have all of it. So you don't need anything. But the one thing we, a lot of us don't have is stability. That, that people need to remain stable. Because when you're stable, things come. We talk about building the building. Remember that building they, they drive by? Do you want an unstable building? Can a building be built on something unstable? It cannot be. So stability, and, and I'm not just talking stability financially. I hope you understand. This goes beyond just money. This is, this is why it's philosophy. This is why it's stability mentally. It's stability with your, your urges or, or whatever, whatever it is. Are you, some of you deal with different stuff. Some of you could be your weight. It could be the food you eat. It could be what you do after the market hours, or what you do to entertain yourself. Some of you, you have stability in some areas and you're, you don't have stability in other areas. Or in general, you're just not stable. Because, and what I mean by that, and, and don't, don't be scared of it, don't, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not like it's a bad thing, but it just means you are, you're, you're fluctuating. You, you, you know, it's hard for you to stay into something. A lot of, a lot of you guys haven't stayed in something for a long time. So that, that's what I'm going to talk about. I mean, we're going to get into it, but I'm going to talk about kind of what led up to it. And you guys, I already, I already shared some of it. I talked about the real estate guys. I, I talked to him and yesterday I was, um, I was, what's it called? Uh, we had the real estate zoom call. And I popped in on him and I was just listening to them for a little bit. It was really nice. I enjoyed it. And, and they, were, they were saying a bunch of different stuff. And at one point we were talking and I got Donnie in there. Shout out Donnie Lexus, baby. My Greek God. You know, we were talking and he was just, you know, afterwards he was saying thank you. He was telling me a lot of stuff. And, and I really loved it. He was hyped. It was great. And, and it's funny because if you guys were in the real estate call, there was like 20 of you in there maybe. This is how philosophy happens. Because uh, you guys see, remember what I'm, what I'm telling you? If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. Because like I'll walk into places, I walk into different the places we work with and all that. And I get into conversations with people. And usually I bring them to you guys the next day on stream. So we were talking and Donnie said something to me that was very interesting. Because he said, he was like, I love it. He said, I used to not be able to stay in my lane. And it was funny because two things happened. One, he just started saying, stay in your lane. He really just reiterated the, the whole stay in your lane philosophy. But when he said it, I got hyped. And I was like, thank you, bro. He kept thanking me. I was like, thanking you. He was like, you did all of this, Josh. And I was like, I don't know what I did. But then I was like, damn. But I was like, just hearing it, when you said it to me, it got me hyped. I already knew it, but I heard it from you. And that's why I was like, dude. I think it's just like when you hear it from somebody else, it just sounds different sometimes, you know? It's like I'm not sometimes, I mean, I'm glad I, I could offer inspiration, help you guys, whatever it is, but I, I do believe all glory goes to God ultimately. But at the same time, I'm just like, it's just when you hear it in a different way, it just it hits different. Because I'm the one who said the stay in your lane philosophy. He said it back to me and it got me motivated. 
And it was just because I heard him because he was like, he said, he was like, you know, I learned. He's like, I used to get bothered by what people were doing with their trades, this and that. He's like, you know, they buy Nikolai. God bless them. You know, like, why? It doesn't affect me. And he said that. And I was like, I was like bobbing my head. They couldn't see me. I didn't have my camera on. But I was like, dude, I feel you, man. <laughs> I feel you. And, 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 that was, and that was part of it. But then now Donnie asked me, he was like, how do you fight it, though? He said, what do you do when you can't stay in your lane and it gets hard? He says, what if, like, you, you're losing the motivation? He said, what, what do you do when your motivation changes? He says, your motivation is going to change. Well, you know, you, when you, you have to deal with this, you got to deal with that. He said, what do you do to still find him, Lee? To still finally just stay in your lane and keep that strength and keep on the path. That's what he asked. So he told me that and I was just like, it didn't, it didn't make sense a little bit because I said, it's, it's literally like, it's, it was, it was just so weird. I was like, motivation doesn't change. You know what I'm saying? Like literally I said, motivation doesn't change. So we're We'll talk about what, what people did, but understand that initially motivation doesn't change. Do you want to feed your family? You want to take care of your kids? You want you want that car? You want that house? You you said you were gonna be a, a man of means. That you know you heard Remy on that eleven out of eleven yesterday. The motivation has not changed, but how you feel changed. Your feelings changed. So he asked me that, and my answer to him was first I said motivation doesn't change. The only thing changes is feelings, and that's why I said let's let's not forget what we what we what we've learned. You go with what you know, not how you feel. Your, your emotions will misguide you because emotions change. You listen, I said that. I said, you listen to me for seven hours. Some of you fucking love me. You hear the play. I say something good. You love me. I say one thing. Your whole attitude changes. Emotions have changed. But the facts have not changed. Am I doing what I always do? Yes. Am I saying what I always say? For the most part. Am I offering what I say I'm going to offer? Yes. Have I kept it the exact system? Yes. The facts have not changed, but your feeling has changed. So that's what happens. It's not that you're, you're, it's hard to stay in your lane. It's, you saw this guy in his car, and he's swerving, and he's driving drunk, and you're like, oh, but I don't want him to hurt himself. He's in my family. It's my cousin. It's my brother. It's my close friend. So I'm going to hop out of my lane because I don't want him to no. no. Because it's sad, and I get it, you want to help, but you, that's not staying in your lane. Because you have to realize it doesn't matter how it makes you feel, whether you're worried about if he's going to crash, if you're like this idiot, he's going to hurt someone else, he's going to do this, whatever you think. At the end of the day, you have to know it's not going to change anything. You have to know what you know, pretty much. His driving isn't going to affect where you know you're going. It doesn't affect what you know you have. It doesn't affect what pace you're at, nothing. And then if a guy drives by in a Bugatti, you shouldn't be mad. Oh, he's, I can't believe he's driving that. I hope he crashes. Why would he spend that? No, you should be happy. But Because even if he's going faster than you, it doesn't change where you're going. It doesn't change the destination you had in your mind. And guess what? When you see somebody in that car, that should let you know he's a human. He came out of a womb just like I did. He had to learn things just like I did. He lived his life, but he, he, he did it. That should encourage you. But the point is, stay in your lane. The point is, how do you get that motivation when you guys are like, I lost my motivation. How do I stay in my lane? Oh, I just want to help people or I see people doing shit. Just stay in your fucking lane. Just go with what you know. What is your goal that you know? Where do you want to be? What do you want? Are you going to get there? Yes. Nobody, nobody's behavior will change that except for you. Simple as that. So put that into perspective. And then even then I told them, I told them what I've been telling you guys all week, all week. Be nice. Stop being a hater. That's why we said stay in your lane. And I'm telling you, if it doesn't help you out, I will be surprised. This is a real estate. Do you realize this philosophy I'm telling you? This wasn't like I fucking met Donnie up at a Bible study. 
we were in a real estate call with all real estate agents and we were talking about business and real estate. And that's what I said to them. I said, you guys need to stay in your lane. You want to get clients? You want to get good at this business? You want to you progress? You need to be out there and people want, you need to provide value and people need to like you. And guess what? You've already experienced it. Go tell somebody, I'm going to trade stocks. I'm going to get into this. I'm going to do this. You already have detractors. The detractors already exist. Every single one of us has a detractor in our life ready to tell us what we don't do good, why this isn't going to work, why you shouldn't do this. The supply and demand sucks. There's no value in it because everybody has one. I have one. You have one. So why are you guys taking this effort to not even be valuable because you're taking effort to get out of your lane to just add to more hate and distraction that those people already guaranteed have. Mm. See, do you, do you get that point? Damn, that contract's at 1500 now. Well, God bless you. Oh, hi. I'm still up on both of these now too. Hi. Amen. Oh, that's worth 400 Oh, let's go. I might sell that one soon. But all I'm saying is that if everybody has a detractor, I'll tell you what a lot of people don't have. A lot of people don't have somebody there who's just could stay in their lane. Someone who has a Bugatti and cheers the Bugatti on and just does their own thing and says, yeah, do your thing. You know, I'm here. I mean, that's cool. Not a lot of people have that. And you're out here, you, you're trying to build a business. You're trying to be someone you're like, I want to help people. I want to inspire people. I want to do all, you want to do all these things. But every opportunity with a human being you've got, you've, you've literally brought them down. Or you're not, you're being that, you're not, you're not listening to them or you're not giving them, create that space. Why do you think clients like me, people like, that's what it is. I was telling you guys my thing with, with the Airbnb. My thing I don't like is just don't, don't be shady around me. Just tell me what you want to do. And that's it. That's how, that's how my, you see what I'm saying? It's like people want, I know that, that I provide value in that. You tell me what it is. If you could be straight up with me, I'm cool. I just need to know what's going on. And I'll tell you what I can know and what I can't know, what's acceptable and what's not. It's very, very, very simple. But some of you guys, you're getting in people's business. You're doing this. You're taking their problems on you. You're judging them for this and saying on this. And then it's like, oh, well, I reached out to this many people. How many clients do I have? Oh, I can't build my business because this is because, dude, you're acting like Karen. You're not in your lane. Do you guys realize when you get outside of your lane, you turn into Karen? Do you understand that? Because like, why are you so worried about something not pertaining to you, Karen? Why are you, you going to go tell this person everything they're doing wrong when you have done the same wrong shit, Karen? Honestly, that's why I said, I say, that's why I tell you guys I suck. I say, I mean, that's why, like, some of you think this is preaching. It's like, no, this isn't preaching. I'm not a pastor. I'm not, I don't, I can't set that standard for you. I'm not good like that. I'm not a perfect human being. I don't want someone, one day you're going to find out, you're like, Josh ate meat, vegan meat. Josh smoked weed. Josh did this. I can't believe it. He's a hypocrite. No, because I said that's, that's not who I am. But I stay in my lane. But at the same time, why are we out here judging people for shit that we've done? You're getting out of your lane and losing motivation off what? You did the same shit. Stay in your lane, show love, be loving, and that's it, okay? That's how you get the motivation, but it's go with what you know. Stop letting feelings, stop letting other people's decisions dictate your feelings because that's what's messing everything up. It really, really is. Because you're getting in and you're, you're feeling some type of way and you're getting out. It doesn't change what you know. Okay? What you know will never change. How you feel changes every day. Do you guys know the difference between morning Josh and afternoon Josh? 
Does anybody know the difference? Morning Josh and afternoon Josh. What's the difference? If you think it's the clock, you got it fucked up. Hmm. It's how he's feeling. That's it. That's all. My feelings change every fucking morning. Every day. All throughout the day. You don't think I read shit and I see shit. I see a play or I see a negative comment. And then I have to, ooh. But I have to, I have to oh, it's, it's a difficult process every day. You have to go with what you know and not with what you feel. That is how you make sure. And if you fall back, you slip up, God bless you, try again. Stick to what you know. Where are you going? What's the fact? What do you want? That's it. That is it. So keep that in mind. That's the first part. That's what I talked about, Donnie. And now it brings to the second part that I told you, stability now. Do you see what I'm saying? This is why I wanted to bring that up because it makes sense. It goes hand in hand. Stability and success. It's just like consistency. We, we, we've talked about the economic value provided by consistency. We, we've talked about that. That's what stability is in a sense. And the, and the point is, Remy, he was stable. He remained stable in what he wanted to do. He made the decision. That's why I said he never quit. This is why I'm saying stay, stability and not because if you are responding to your feelings, emotions are unstable by nature. Do you understand that? So some of you, if you're dictating your life and trading and business decisions in your future on how you feel, what's happening? It is in, that is innately unstable. If it wasn't, you would feel good all the time. If it wasn't, you'd be happy all the time. If that wasn't true, you would, you would, be, you would, you would be able to flip the switch. You, wouldn't know, you would know why you feel sad. You would know why you're happy. There's no stability in there. But the, the point is, value the relationship between stability and success. Because how I, I, I remember, I don't, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to give you something to think about. Because if you don't value it, there's no way you could acquire it. Because if you don't value it, there's no reason to be motivated to go and acquire. So what I'm trying to say is, value the relationship between stability and success. Because I don't want some of you guys, you know, literally... You have to prove it to the world and, and many things, but nobody will get blessed with something if they're unstable. That's it. Go look at your trading. Stability in some of you. That's what I'm saying. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to learn anything. You don't need to buy a course. You don't need to listen to me anymore. But you need to remain stable. Regardless of what happens to the market, are you not going to get in your feelings are you going to be, be impulsive? Are you going to remain stable? Are you, gonna, are you stable in saving your money? Are you stable with the balance? Is your budget stable? Are you stable in how you've planned it every month? Is there stability? Can you save the money and keep it? Are you stable? Do you get, literally, if you made a lot of money and went and bought something that you normally wouldn't buy, that is technically instability. Do you get that? That's what we're doing. You're getting, ex you're, you're being, you're literally getting thrown into instability. And that's what the problem is, is now you guys aren't remaining stable. You got what you wanted, but then you didn't remain stable. So what you got didn't remain stable. And it, it, it was fleeting. Feeling is all instability. So just understand all you guys have to do is be stable. It's, it's really what it's, or, or value it. You see what I'm saying? We va why is it when you lose on a trade, you lose on a business, you lose anything, we always value change. And we always say we got to do something different and different. But it's never about holding it down and remaining stable. It's never about committing. It's never about bearing down. Why? That's the way I'm looking at it. 
because I've just stuck at everything I've always done. And I've seen what it's done. But when, when I was, my life was unstable when I was unstable. My finances were unstable when I was unstable. The minute I set that floor and I started to gain stability and value it and work towards it, things got more stable. I was able to handle a lot more. The question I'm asking some of you, really, are you ready for it? That's the question. Are you stable enough for what you fucking want? Like, are you stable enough to have a million-dollar car payment or a house payment? You know, if you have a million-dollar home, are you stable enough to handle multiple things? Are you stable enough to handle all the people around you? Are you going to be stable enough to handle it when people are going to want something from you? Are you going to be stable enough to handle taxes, stable enough to make sure that you got rich once in your whole family? You see what I'm saying? And, it's, and if you're not stable, God bless you. Because if you could admit it, now we know what to look for. God bless you. Amen. So if you're not stable with the, you, 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 again, it's all very, very important. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of, a better way. I, I did forget what I what I was what I was saying. What was I saying? Give me a sec. Hold on. I get the Spotify guy got me a little hyped. <laughs> mm I forgot the point I was saying before that, but. Stability, staying in your land. I know, I need, I need to see. I forgot what it was. It'll come back to me. But, again, oh, can you handle it? Are you ready? That's what I was asking. Because, and that's why I said, if you said you're not stable, amen. But the, the point is, you don't want it if you're not stable. Because you know what happens when you get something and you're not stable? You got it too soon. You got it too soon. That's why it was ripped away from you. You weren't ready. That's why it led to this. It was a problem like that. It, and, and that's what's funny because dealing with the failure, that's just God preparing you for, the, for when it is yours. You see what I'm saying? That's why. It's, it's, it, it, those experience, that's why I'm saying it's a gift and a curse. You got to embrace it because that experience in and of itself, even when it gets ripped away from you, it's trying to teach you stability. But that's the thing. We fail to realize that's the lesson in our failures. We, it's very hard to observe and look at ourselves and say, we acted unstable. We, did not, we, did, we didn't hold the, we, that's it. You just didn't hold the scope. You just got to hold it stable. That's, and we didn't. That's what we do a lot of the times. We get too excited. That's why everybody. Sometimes you get caught in the moment. Some of you guys, you get unstable when politics comes on. Kaylee comes on, y'all get real unstable. Uh, 10, 12,000 people, y'all get unstable. Make 100 grand, 1,000 people get unstable. You got to remain grounded with it, honestly. But understand the value and how they're linked and how it's related to preparation and that when you could prove to the world and you could show, prove to yourself and remain stable, the stablest foundations get the biggest buildings. I hope you know that. You don't take a very stable foundation and put something small on it. It doesn't need to be that stable. So realize the level of your stability, you are setting up your boundaries of what you want to build. So value it and understand there is a link. And there's no, because I last thing I don't want you, some of you, you did it for, I don't want you to do this. 10 years, you're going to get success. But you quit at nine and a half. You quit at nine. How come? Maybe five years into it, you're like, maybe God, if God wanted this to happen, he would have let it happen. This just isn't for me. Were you really about it? Isn't that crazy? That's the whole point. That's how fucking nuts this is. That's what I mean by stability, though. Could you stay in something 
Yeah, we're talking years. Don't don't let the stock market fool you. And we've been very, very blessed this year. So don't let it fucking fool you and think everything's going to always happen this fast. And I'm just going to... No. I've been doing this for 13, 14 years. Are you never going to... Are you okay with that? Are you going to remain stable? Are you going to say, this is what I'm going to do. This is who I'm going to become. And this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go at whatever the pace. Are you going to remain stable and stay in that lane? That's the question. That's why I'm saying, are you ready for it? You don't need to learn that. Go learn stability. That's it. If you lack the stability, you will lack the success. I mean, honestly, tell, go look around. You will rarely see success without stability. And even if you see unstable people with success, I could almost guarantee you the thing that brought them success, they remain stable in that area. Think about it. You don't have success without stability. You don't see it with options, no. Any unstable trader lost all the gains from March. Fact. Your success, exact, exactly, Eagle. Your, your, your success isn't based on, on what, you, what you do or what you know. Your success is based on your stability. And there's a high, high reward and value put on stability by God, the world, and human beings. I love it. Because God values stability, but so do humans. I love it. It's the best. It's the best. Because it, does, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I know God is going to reward me, but even if you don't believe in God, every human values stability. Psh. Man, yeah, they don't feel me. They don't feel me. How do you become stable? You go with what you know. You have to build that foundation. You have to think about what, what it is you know. These are philosophies we talked about. You take what you know and you, always, you, you, you remain in what you know. You set what you want. You set how you're going to be with everything and then just stick to what you know. And as the feelings and time passes and life passes, you will get tossed and turned. The wind will blow. But if you know where your sail is directed, you're going to go there. And don't let your feelings trick you into getting out of your lane. Don't let your feelings trick you into thinking a fact is fiction. Because it's, it, that, that, that's how people fail. Remy said it yesterday. He, once he realized it, he said, I could do whatever I want. I could have anything I want if I set my mind. And he did it. Why is PayPal ripping? Romeo posted that like a minute ago too. Big call sweep. Yeah, fuck that. I don't like any of these call sweep plays. I like that Spotify, dog. Ho, ho, ho. You got a lot to work on mentally? No, I mean, even then. We all do. We have a long journey. I don't think you have a lot to work on. I think you have a lot of time. <laughs> that's it. I tell you, I see all of you guys. And that's what I'm saying. Don't put me on a pedestal. And even if you do, maybe this will help. Because you guys are like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. It's not that bad. Like you're just putting a lot of pressure on yourself. And don't don't even trip. Because some of you think you're doing the worst things in the world. You think you're so... I did 10 times worse than you. I've already... That's why I'm saying. Like how am I... I'm in my... That's why I'm in my lane. I see it. The world will provide and everything. Just remain stable. You say you want to do real estate, stay stable in that for the rest of your life. Decide today. You want to do stocks, stay stable in that. You want to be stocks, stay stable. Have a balance, a budget. Month, Every month is stability. A balance, a long term is fucking stability and just stay stable. Stay consistent. I was telling Michael when he was like, I didn't get to play the Spotify. I said it doesn't fucking matter. Just stay stable with the strategy. You're going to miss a bunch of them. But if you stay stable... And you keep, you're going to hit it. That's the whole point. Whew. <clears throat> so, 
Is stability a system? No, stability is a feature of a system and an important feature of the system. So don't underestimate this. That, that's, and even that same verse in the Bible, it goes, the whole verse of that, the, the stability and everything, what it, what it ends up with, God, there's a verse in the Bible, and God, it, this is what Jesus is saying to his disciples. He says, without me, you can't do anything. He says, if you remain in me, you could do anything. Remain in me. He's literally saying stability. So God is saying to the disciples, it's so weird because he's about to leave them. And he says, oh, you can't do anything without me. But if you remain in me, you could do anything. It's the con most contradicting thing in the world. Imagine these guys back in the day. They're confused as hell at this point. They're like, what do you mean, Jesus? He's saying stability. Yeah, life's hard. I don't know what to do. What, what are you going to do? You're not going to know what to do. There's going to be this and that. Remain in me. Remain stable. Jesus is a belief, dude. Fuck out of here. Oh, you get you guys get caught up in my cursing. You're going to get caught up in the church. You guys a belief. It's love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's peace. It is it's about working hard. It's it, this is it's a dogma. It's an ideology. Call it whatever the hell you want. But it all encompasses positivity. I like it. I believe in it. If I apply it. But the point is stay stable with that mindset. Remain in there, you will remain in me. You'll have if you could remain in that if you could stay stable in that, you will have whatever you want and stay stable with whatever you want. That's even one of the only requirements that God is even saying. He's not even, he's just saying stay stable. That's why I said it. My, my whole life, people, my mom, my dad said I was going to go to hell. They said I did all this. That's why I never believed early on. Then I finally read it. It said the number one commandment. You want to go to heaven? It says, love your neighbor as you love yourself and put no other man before me. Amen. That's what it is. Put, put no, there it is. Nothing. Nothing to lose. Whew. Just if you love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's it. So that's all. That's all I had. To, that's, that's all. That's the only thing you have to do. Do you see what I'm saying, though, to stay to staying stable? And this, you, you don't have to do anything crazy. You're not, it's not asking to do anything. But to remain consistent, to believe and stay committed to that. That's it. If you could remain stable in that, you could remain stable in your belief. But it goes, again, it goes hand in hand. Do you know why I bring up, why did I, why did I just bring that up? I know a lot of you, you guys get mad, you guys get this, whatever, any, anything, any, I don't, I don't care. I love you guys. I love all of you regardless, even if you don't like me. You know I do. <laughs> That's what sucks. Because you still going to get the plays, you still going to get the information, and, and deep down in my heart, I'm, I'm excited. You say whatever you want, you could get, you could try to make me mad, but you know, I know, and God knows the benefit. So, amen. But why did I bring that up right now? Hmm. Why am I bringing up God after all that instability and success and everything? You want to know why? A lot of you see my belief in God. I am stable in that, I like to think. I've done bad things. I've had failures. I've had successes. At the end of the day, I'm always going to tell you, is God first. You're going to thank me. I'm going to thank God first. You thank me, I say thank God. It's always God, and I remain stable in that. Amen. So is it a coincidence that I could remain stable in other aspects of my life? Is it a coincidence that if I could stay stable with an invisible friend? People will call it an invisible friend. You'll have some of the people who think they're the smartest people in the world will tell me I'm dumb. It's fake. I can't see it. I've never heard, I, I've heard all these pastors and this and that. They say God came down and talked to them. God ain't never said anything to me. I never heard no trumpet, no voice, no nothing. Oh, but I believe, and I've stayed stable in that. That's why I said it the other day. Some people try to, they, they try to bring up shit. I said it. I said, do you think, what do you want me to say? 
I said, what do you want me to say if you if you go against what I said? Do you think you're going to change my mind and make me stop believing? I lived my whole life. I, I graduated with a degree in philosophy. I've met people way more successful and richer than you. Try to tell me and convince me out of that. And I've always said, why? What the? F <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But do you see the point? If you can remain stable in one thing and get stability in one area, apply it everywhere and take it. But if you could remain st stable in the hard shit, I think remaining st stable in God is difficult. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the best, and I'm not saying I don't have my setbacks, but I, at the end of the day, I do know. I do know I'm entitled as hell with God. I know it because that is my father. So even when I mess up, even when I do anything, I know. I, I, I feel shameful. I feel bad, all that. But you know what I'm going to say? I'm, I'm your son. I, I'm heir to this. I, I, you, your blood, your, I believe your promise, and I'm going to believe it. And I am going to do better. So, But I've stayed stable no matter what. Now, you, you're not going to change my mind. A mistake isn't going to change my mind. And see, I'm saying God, but go replace God with your portfolio. Go replace God with money. Whatever else is important to you. Shit, I don't care. But hopefully you get it. Hopefully you get it. So I hope you value this link. I hope you understand the importance to keeping this starts with what you know and not what you feel. Title because you remain in him. Amen. And that's what I'm saying. It's hard sometimes. Some of you, that's what I said the other day. You guys are always like, I did this wrong. I did this. I, I fell into temptation. You guys are telling yourself you don't remain in him when you do. That's what God wants. He wants someone who could say, like, he said you're his son. You should go, let's go. Walk, fucking chest to the sun. I don't care what you did. That's what he says. He cares that you're coming to him. He cares that you're stable. That's what I care about. Don't I don't care about your YOLO. You lost money. You did. I don't care. I care that you kept going. I care that you didn't quit, and I care that you made a long-term portfolio. That's all that matters. Everything else is just is extracurricular in the meantime, a learning mis mi mistake, whatever you want to call it. But that it doesn't matter what you did. What matters is what do you remain stable with? Go blow up 10 accounts. Do you have a long term? That's what matters. Blow up 10 accounts. Did you not quit? Good. You lost 80% of your account. Did you not YOLO your 20% because you gave up? Good. That's what matters. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Woo. I hope you feel me. I hope you feel me. So, I love you all. I hope that helps. That is your philosophy. I encourage you all to remain stable and value it and understand that foundation of stability is the foundation for everything you want. The more stable, the better. And I'm excited for what you guys are going to build. Man, I, can't wait I can't wait for you to show me one day. I can't wait to be a part of it. And I can't wait to be able to say, damn, I remember that building when I drove by it. Every day in the chat, I used to see that building. All day in Chattadonia. Who would have known? That would have been the biggest building in Ch all of Chattadonia. Who would have thought? You know? I love it. I'm excited. I, get goosebumps. I have goosebumps right now. Because I, I envision it. I see it. I know God, God, God willing and God is good. But I know you guys have it in there. I know, I know a lot of you have it in you. I'm telling you, if it's, this shit's in me, it's in you. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, it's not it just, you guys are good, bro. So put a smile on your face and that's it. And, and again, actually, the last thing, the last thing is even what I said with, we, you know, you heard Remy yesterday, even the guys on the real estate. I was listening to these guys on the Zoom call. There was Nodder. He just got his license and he's like, everyone's like, I'm doing all this stuff and this. And I just said, enjoy it, man. You're going to just, that's all you got to remember. Just enjoy it. Just like Remy said, you're going to look back at this. So smile, man. This is part of the process. You're going to get shit on. You're going to blow up accounts. You're going to take L's. People are going to make fun of you. People aren't going to understand. It's all part of the process and enjoy it because you're never going to have this again, man. Because you're going to look back and be like, damn, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. You know? And stop planting seeds of stress and hatred towards this because like you have to just make sure you have fun doing that's what i'm saying smile while you're doing this because i wish i could go back 
and remember when I was in some of your guys' shoes. I love it. That's why I love helping some of you guys because it's so fucking exciting. And you don't realize it. You, you, don't, you can't realize it yet. So enjoy it and plant seeds of happiness every time here. Because if you plant, if you're only focused on the money and what it's going to get you, you're only planting, you're, you're planting those Wolf of Wall Street competition seeds. You're like those dudes on the memes. It's all these people with strength, you know, they, they, every day, it doesn't matter. They could have the best life. They see a losing trade. They go to sleep sad. It's, it's sad. You know, that's not what it is. Like we, we believe in peace. There's love. Like, fuck out of here. What? Everyone's like, you don't make as much money if you're nice in this. Fuck out of here. I'm doing fine, baby. So you see what I'm saying? Be peaceful, man. Do your thing and enjoy it. Have fun. Plant the fucking seed that every time you turn this on, associate it with pleasure and having fun and growing in knowledge and not with whatever the amount is going to. Because, again, if, you, if you're if you able to do this for the rest of your life fun and, and enjoy it and, it and it only produces fruits of positivity because you didn't you didn't plant stress, you didn't force yourself in here, you didn't plant it for the wrong reason, you know, you're going to enjoy it. And it's going to be a lot of fun and you're going to make the most of it and you're not going to, you'll be more stable because you're not planting all these seeds of pressure and then feeling like you need to quit because you didn't do this every fucking week or every month or whatever it is. So enjoy it, man. I'm very, I'm jealous of it. I envy it for some of you, man. Cause I mean, I mean, I even get like sad about it. Cause I'm like, and, and I'm humbled. I'm like, God is good, dude. I wish I could go back. I wish I could put myself in some of your shoes, man. And, and the fact you guys are there. So I said it, I said this to the guy on the real estate, on the real estate chat yesterday. I told him, I said, I've helped start a ton of real estate careers. Personally, I have, but I've also helped end a lot of real estate careers. And it was because of the pressure I brought. I used to, I used to, to pressure a lot of people. They, they hate it. They would come into the office. I was intense. Some of you have seen me intense, but not fully. In the, that, 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 it was the seeds. They didn't enjoy it. Or they were there for the wrong reason. But the people I've see, seen who wanted to do their planted the seeds, they did it having fun. They kept chugging, whether it took one year or 10 years. No, it doesn't matter what they did. But they just kept going. It was always happy. They didn't complain about it. And they just enjoyed it. They understood, like, hey, I'm setting up a career. I'm setting up my life. This is what I'm doing. This is like, you know, and they, they, they had fun with it. They wanted to call people. They want, they saw, I was because I said it. I told these guys, I think Nader's like 19, 20. I was like, dude, like your job is real estate, man. Like you guys are stressing out, even stocks. Like you guys are stressing out about what you need to do. And I have to do this. I got to learn the technicals. I got to learn this. I got to learn this. I got to learn this. I got to learn all that. But it's like, dude, enjoy it. Your job is to talk to people. Your job is to go out, talk to people on the phone, engage with people. You could go hit on people while you're pitching them for real estate if that's what you into. Man, you could have so much fun with this. Your job is to help people. Your job is to, you, you, people have called you stupid your whole life. Nobody wanted to listen to you. Your parents didn't want to even listen to you. And now you could go help somebody with their biggest financial purchase in, the, in, in their life. And people will listen to you and you could help people and you could actually provide real value. Your job is to sit at home, pay attention to the news. You could turn $50 into $1,000 in a day. What if you suck at talking? I, I've noticed, it's like, it's like a fat person coming into the gym. First time, they pick up the bench, they pick it up, put it down. They said, I suck at lifting weights. What if I suck at lifting? You don't suck at lifting, you just haven't done it enough. Go talk every day. Go talk to one new person, two new people, five new people. Go lift one push-up. Go do one push-up a day. Tell me all my one push-up. I have people in here. I have one push-up. They're doing 50 now. 50. 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds. They said, I've never done this. I, I, I used to, uh, Josh, I can't do a push-up. Josh, no, I did 50 push-ups. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Talk to yourself. Start a YouTube channel. Make one video a day. I like that. Amen. Amen. So, I think you guys get it, man. And enjoy it. Okay?
Don't plant these seeds and enjoy this moment, man. Some of you, it's like, oh, I don't know any. Like, some of you are so stressed out that you don't know anything. You should smile. I don't know the difference between a call and a put. Smile. Josh, I don't get what you're saying. Smile and enjoy it, bro. Enjoy it. You're going to have a lot. As long as you don't quit, you'll have a lot bigger things to worry about, and you're going to laugh at that. And you're going to be like, damn, I wish I knew. If only I knew what I knew now then. So don't ruin it for yourself. Don't ruin it for your future self. Ignorance is bliss. It really is, dude. It really, really is. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know? So, because that's what I'm saying, man. It's Some of you are just focusing on all the wrong things. You, you should just, just enjoy it, man. I'm not even saying be ignorant. I'm just saying enjoy it because you already know what's happening. See what I'm saying? That ignorance is not is a lack of in knowing. All I'm saying is that you know what's going to happen. You know you're on a good path. You know you're on a good... You know what I'm saying? You know you're going to be invested. You know all of this stuff. You know it's going to be difficult. You know it's going to blow up account. You know you could lose... You know what I'm saying? So smile and just embrace these opportunities. Embrace the experience, man. I'm telling you, if you guys do, you'll love it. Because this shit's art. I was telling that to him. This, this shit's art. I said, wait, embrace. You're going to all find your stroke. Trust me. It's going to be different than mine. You can't paint how I paint, but you will. Eventually. And you're going to find your stroke, your painting, your color, everything. And it's art. And create. So stop letting the noise get in there. Stop listening to people. Stick with it. And enjoy it. Just enjoy this. Like, Do you realize like that's what I'm doing right now? Like, if you think I could get, if I'm giving you good philosophy, good plays, good anything, I don't give a shit what it is. If it's good, it's because I enjoy it, baby. Believe me, there's a correlation. And it has to do with the stability as well. But, ooh, do I love it. So I, that's why I'm saying enjoy this process. I'm having more fun than you are. For some of you, some of you tell me your experiences and I'm just I'm just picturing myself in your shoes and I'm living it out and I love it. It's fun. But you're stressed out. You're tripping out. And you think it's just like every other problem you've been in your life. Oh my God, what if this happens? It's gonna be awful. And then your imagination gives you a hundred awful scenarios, and at the end of the day, none of them ever happen. <laughs> so there you go. But That is it. So that's your philosophy. I hope it helps you guys. God bless you. Make sure you are subscribed. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. You're on mobile press. High chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the Nightly Watch. This is the main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts Bootcamp and Real Estate Course.